delays. So this is um, 3921 week 6 lecture 2. So yeah, there. <laughs> So today, what we today what we're planning to do is planning to do the SD card. But then I can I'll do the SD card like next week because a lot of you are doing the PS2 keyboard. So let's talk about the PS2 keyboard because I'm also bored. Like the SD card, by the way, if you go to week six through ten project, I'll put like information. Well, the SD card's already on there. Okay, so we'll discuss this next week. Um, today, what we'll do is we'll discuss the PS2 keyboard interface from QSIS, and I'll post that. Reference design also online. So a nice uh, reference design would be we type in something on the keyboard and it appears on the um, VGA display, for example. Right. So actually, if you go into the university program, if you go under embedded systems, okay. So if you go under IP cores, so let's see, yours is 13.0. And so what we're going to look at is this PS2 controller, right? Let me open that up. But what's useful is if you go under design examples, if you download this DVAL, this DE2115, which you don't have, so you go under DE1, choose VHDL. This basic computer and media computer are very useful in terms of reference designs. In the sense, if you go under your, wherever you installed Altair, Quartus, I installed it on the C drive. If you go under 13.0 as per service pack one, university program, NIOS to computer systems, okay? So basically, if you want a video demo, you go into this folder, okay? If you want to access all the documentation, you go into the IP folder, university program, appropriate, um, I don't know, communications, for example, uh, Ethernet, doc. And you can find the documentation there. But if you want reference designs, you go under university program examples for video. But these NIOS2 computer systems, so once you install this for the DE1, you can go under DE1. If you go under the basic computer, for example, there is app software, yes? So here it is, a bunch of examples, okay? So it has like interrupt example. S is assembly. We're not doing assembly. You could do assembly if you want. Uh, let's see. Da -da -da. See what this is. So this program demonstrates use of interrupts, blah blah, blah and then enables now from the in time interval timer and push button keys. Okay. So actually, here is an example of um, how they are setting interrupts without the HAL, all right, the hardware abstraction layer. Is that clear? They're basically using memory map I.O. I mean, there's actually an example of bad code. For example, they have hard-coded, not only there's a, oh, forget the spelling mistake, but they've basically hard-coded the base address, which is, you don't want to do that, okay? You want to get your base address from system.h. So let's see if they have a HAL example. Um, interval timer ISR, let's look at this. Uh, nope, this is not HAL, right? This is also, uh, memory mapped I.O. Let's see. Uh, app software. Two, two, uh, getting started. I don't think any of these is HAL. No, it's not. It's all memory mapped I.O. Let's go into the media computer. Oh, there it is. App software HAL. Okay? So I'm going to use HAL. Uh, let's see. Interrupt HAL. Uh, let's look at audio ISR. I want to do the keyboard, but just look at it. Uh, so this, some of you are doing audio, yes? So it's very useful in the sense, basically, they, so if you look at the, so let's discuss audio while we're at it. So what the heck? Oh, I can't go to the FTP um, sites through MSOE. So let's go into IP cores. Uh, let's look at the audio configuration, all right? And since I can't get to FTP sites, that's fine. This sense, I'll just use the local documentation. Let's look at this. So Altera, 13.0 service pack one, um, intellectual property, university program, audio video, audio 
documentation. And as you can see, there's the information on the Wolfson codec. All right. So here is the block diagram for the audio core. Okay. So basically, uh, it's it, these are the registers. Okay. There's a control register. There's FIFO. You have FIFO because the clock here is different. The clock frequency here is different from the clock frequency here. This is usually 50 megahertz. Okay. This clock. This is around 12 megahertz. But this core takes care of all of it for you. And so you can do memory map I.O., which we're not going to do, all right? Uh, 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 let's see. Let's go into HAL. So include this. You open the device. Okay, if you want, you can enable an interrupt, all right? Um, blah, 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 reset. And here is read FIFO, okay? That's probably useful. So let's see what they have done. Uh, let's see. So here is audio ISR. Uh, let's see if they have a main that goes with it. Probably do. software how globals.h see what is interrupts.c yeah here is the main okay so let's start with this uh, so we're looking at audio so they declare a pointer to this type okay uh, by the way notice they use alt printf right it has a smaller footprint than printf fyi okay but you really don't. You can use printf's because you're using SDRAM. Yeah. So let's see. What else do they do? Green LED. Open the audio port. So here it is. And this uh, device here comes from system.h, right? Or whatever you named it in, like QSIS. Actually, it's what you named in QSIS, right? That's what matters. Uh, so here, they use the legacy function for registering the IRQ, you can still use that, okay? The one I used is the newer one. It's the same thing, right? So in the sense, and this, uh, okay, look, this is how it happens in industry, all right? The people who, all right, so continuing. So we are passing, uh, this is an interesting comment here. This is what we were talking about yesterday, the context argument, okay? So that's this guy. That's how you pass in parameters. So we're not looking at the push button ISR. Go through it. Ask me when you have questions on the push buttons. Okay. We're looking at the audio. So then we registered the audio ISR, which is in a separate file. Okay. So basically what they do is just looking through this. They check for a write interrupt. So let's start. To, uh, let's see. Uh, 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 so it's this slightly different from the way uh, the newer interrupt mechanism works where I just pass directly in the context, right? This actually takes in looking at this arguments into the function. Okay, so let's look at it. I haven't seen this in a long time, so. Yeah. So this is of type white star. This is your context argument, but you can also pass in other arguments. So, uh, let's see, let's go into the audio ISR. So this is the interrupt ID, okay? So what do they do first? They first check for the read interrupt. So it's either read data or write data, okay? So in the case you're recording or something, oh, it's right here, um, you use the read data, yes? Very straightforward. And here is for write data. So notice audio play, what is the difference between just looking at this? Audio play R and audio play L. Yeah, left and right, left and right channel, that's all it is. Okay? So a good uh, starting point for people working on the audio codec would be to hard code a sine wave at a particular, so one thing you could do is, if you want to test all, if this works or not, John, for your understanding, you could uh, uh, make a sine lookup table in VHDL of let's say like, I don't know, one kilohertz might be annoying, right? Like two kilohertz and just send it out. Oh, you know what? It's just simple to do loop back. Just do loop back. So it's, is this clear? So this is the reference design you want to use if you're doing audio. Okay. All right. So next. Let's see. Let's see what else they got. Push button ISR. Um, I thought they had media interrupt. Now. Let's see what this is. Aha. There it is. Okay. I remember them having this. So this is for the people working on the PS2. This is the ISR. Okay, let's look at the main function. Oops, at the dock. Actually, let's get into the dock. Uh, university program, uh, 
input output ps2 there it is okay uh, dock ps2 controller so as usual it's very i mean there's not even a block diagram for this. This is pretty much nothing except you just instantiate the core and just start using the functions, right? What you have to do is obviously, even for the audio core, you have to export ports, okay, the appropriate ports. So let's look at that. But first, let's look at the software. Uh, 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 so here is the ISR. Let's find the main function for this. So let's close this. Let's close that. audio ISR, no, it's again audio ISR, globals, no, that's C, interval timer ISR, no, that's not a media, interrupt how, this is probably the main, let's see. Yeah, it looks like it, yeah. This program demonstrates the use of media ports, blah, 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 plays the recorded audio and interrupt is generated by pressing key two, okay. So, here it is, and the usual, right, so let's look, we're looking at the PS2, so you declare a pointer, to the structure, uh, let's see, where do they register the ISR? Blah, 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 blah. Here it is. Uh, 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 so they open the PS2 port. Okay, check for null. And where do they register? Uh, here it is. Same thing, right? Very straightforward. Okay, and then they use pixel buffer for those of you who are doing like drawing. Okay? All right, so let's look at the hardware. So again, the software reference design uh, can be found once you install the media computers here. So under DE1, you can even look at all this like D2 Nano, uh, oops, master computer systems, D0, sorry, not D2 Nano, D0 Nano. You can even look at those reference designs. But DE1 is more than enough. So it's under the media computer app software HAL, right? So let's see, media graphics HAL. No, it wasn't that, I think it was interrupts. Yeah, it was media interrupt how. All right, so let's look at the hardware. Hopefully, it doesn't take that long to start up QSIS. Oh, it does. So actually, what is not in here is the SD card, okay? So that's what I'll discuss next week. Uh, so next week, full week will be SD card. But uh, what we will do next lecture is I'll have it as a question and answer session. So what I would like you to do is, in addition to your lab, try to get the interrupts going on the PS2. Or like, so the, some of you are doing VGA, some of you are doing PS2. So that's what your goal should be, okay? And that's the purpose of lab three, the timer and stuff like that. So work on that. Uh, what I will finish the reference design later tonight and I'll post it online, where I'll just take some keys and just display it on the VGA display, right? So yeah, we'll go from there. So take a look at it, but then, uh, yeah, please uh, start start working on your projects. Okay? Don't wait till the last minute. It's, it doesn't work like that. It seems very simple. It is, but it involves a lot of different, lot of ideas. It's a systems design. And think about it this way: you finish the project early, you have time, right, to do other things. Okay, so here's the university program. Uh, let's just put in the core. I'm not going to put in the processor and all that stuff because there's no point. Uh, once this thing completed, blah blah blah. University program, uh, I think it was communications, no, generic I.O., yes, PS2 controller. Let's look at what kind of, so Avalon type is memory mapped or streaming, that's interesting, so let's take a look at what we want to use. Uh, where's, did I leave this open? Mm -mm -mm. There is no need to configure the core. Uh, Avalon type, it's recommended to set the Avalon type to memory mapped Okay, there it is, okay? So we will set it to memory mapped. That's what's recommended. Is that clear? So when we have doubts like this, I haven't, I haven't used this core at all. So I'm just looking at it. I'm like, oh, I don't know if it's memory mapped or streaming. Let me just set it to streaming. No, you don't do that, okay? Never assume anything. Never, ever, right? Bad things will start happening. Unless you're like absolutely sure that, I mean, you're the guy who designed this core. You know what's going on. So in this case, set it to memory mapped, and then what else is going on? Let's take a look. Uh, the incoming clock rate must be set to the value of the frequency that will be driving the PS2 controller. So the PS2 controller clock is going to be 50 megahertz, right? This is, that's the default. That's what I'm going to run it at. Okay? So just finish this, and let's see what I can export. Uh, let's see. Conduit. Let's just export this. 
most likely I will get two lines out the data and the clock okay yeah <laughs> exactly that's what I get that's where log HDL okay that's it so on the on this side as usual you connect it to global clock reset okay you don't need to use the clock signals for D0 because you're not sending out an external clock in the sense it's a bidirectional bus right the clock you're sending out is going to be come is going to come from within the controller and then it's a memory mapped slave so you just connect it to the memory that to which your data bus is connected to which is most likely SD RAM right no it has to be SD RAM because you just can't put your code onto on chip memory you don't have enough memory okay like that let's look at audio and video while we're at it uh, audio Okay, we well again don't know if it's memory mapped. Uh, let's check. Uh, functional description. Double not printed words. Section 3 for details. Avalon switch. Uh, 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 32 bits. Remember to export to connect, blah, blah, blah. It is again recommended to set the Avalon type to memory mapped in QSIS and streaming when using the Mega Blizzard. Uh, Alter also recommends instantiating the audio and video config core. This core automatically configures some requests in blah blah blah. Right? The user must include. <laughs> I mean, everything is here. <laughs> when using the memory map, uh, that recommends the audio core be used with the standard or fast version. So it tells you exactly what to do. Okay? So, any questions? Alright, so I don't think I'll do the audio core. I don't know. Do you want me to do the audio core? Connor, <laughs> sorry, you're being recorded. But okay, so why don't you try it, right? Because I have to pick either PS2 or record. If you have difficulties, talk to me in office hours. So what I'll do for next lecture, which I think is on Friday, right, is I'll get the PS2 keyboard going. So you type something on the keyboard, it'll like display some the same thing on the screen, right? That also uses the character buffer. It doesn't use the pixel buffer. For example, right? Let's say you're using the mouse to draw something. You have to use the pixel buffer. Okay. If you want to do both buffers at the same time, which you can, you have to do something, you have to use something called as the alpha blender, right? It's very easy to use. In the sense, if you go under video, where's the alpha blender? There it is. Okay. Now, if you look at the video documentation, it tells you, because the alpha blender basically has a foreground and a background, right? So the foreground comes from your character buffer. The background comes from your pixel buffer. So as you're typing, you can, like, draw in the back. Maybe I'll do that. Or I don't know. Yeah, why don't I do that? Just for the hell of it. Okay, so your reference design, which will be under, uh, because it's fun for me. Okay, so it'll be under week six to ten. So this will cover week seven. Okay, the SD card. The SD card is actually again I caution you for those who are working on the SD card. I would recommend using Choose interface. Thoracic one is not that good, right? It's, the Choose is much better. That's what I use. That's what I'm going to discuss. Yeah, that's next week. But on Friday, what I'll do is I'll just quickly show you the design for uh, this uh, foreground background, right, where you have the PS2 interrupt. Uh, yeah, I will use interrupts on the PS2. Okay. So where you're typing something on the foreground, and you can use the mouse to simultaneously, well, quote unquote, simultaneously draw in the background, right? So that's uh, and then that lecture will also be very short. I'll just show you what the big picture is, the hardware, and then I'll show you the software. We'll go through it. But then get use that from now on. Basically, the lectures will should be pretty short right so one of them some of them might be like full 40 50 minutes or whatever but use that time to ask questions on the project and try to finish the project as soon as you can right if you just if you really put your mind to it you can finish it in a week that is you work on it steadily so finish it i mean it's not that you have to finish it in a week it's just if you do finish it in a week then you have time to do other stuff yes your other classes uh, that's point number one. Point number two, something I remember is this um, Friday, your research summary is due. Okay. So, so some of you already sent it to me. I've started sending back comments. So basically, uh, let's see, let's go to IEEE Explore. It has to be a peer reviewed journal. So in my case, let's see, I'm in Rister, the missing circuit element. If I just Google search, even better. Okay. So here is Google Scholar, right? So here is IEEE Explorer. It caught it. So if you just do a Google Scholar search, I should be able to access this since I'm on the MSOE wireless. Let's check. Yeah. 
So what you could do, you could just summarize this article. That's all I need. Right? It can be from Spectrum, IEEE. It just cannot be an opinionated piece from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, for example. Yeah. And nothing against it, and, uh, against newspapers, but that's not the point of this research summary. Yeah. So any other questions you have? It doesn't have to be on memristors. It can be on anything you're interested in. I got uh, articles on like energy harvesting, etc., which is fine. Right. Any technical field. It doesn't have to be electrical engineering. It can be chemical engineering. Again, as long as it's peer-reviewed. Okay, so that's it for the lecture. Any questions? All right, so I will see you next.